Hey everyone, it's Dinah Lee with Higher Love Healing and Coaching. And today I'm going to talk about um, what you are to a narcissist. And I'm going to use an analogy today so that the picture is a little bit clearer because when we start giving real um, examples, um, which I do a lot. I'll be telling a lot of stories. I have a lifetime of stories, but sometimes it's easier to understand when we use analogies. So the analogy I'm going to use is that you are a toy to be shelved. You are a toy to be owned. Okay. You are, you do not have the right <laughs> to have your own life. Okay. Um, they own you, okay? You belong to them and them only. They do not see you as a real person and God forbid, uh, real needs, okay? So just imagine that there is this spoiled child and I'm gonna use um, in this analogy a, a male narcissist, okay? Females are a little different um, and I'll make a separate video uh, about female narcissists, but they all go through these phases. They just use different tactics. So let's use these, this young boy, the spoiled little boy who is begging and begging and begging for a toy. This is a new state of the art toy that um, they may perceive that everybody wants, but they want to own it. They want to have it, right? So they beg and beg and beg for the shiny new object. And this is uh, called the love bombing phase, okay? Now, in the analogy, maybe the little boy is begging its mother or its father for the toy, always talking about the toy, um, never letting the subject of the toy go, begging and begging, begging. In real life, they are love bombing you, the object, right? You're so beautiful. You are the one. You're my soulmate. Um, you're on and on and on. It feels like they're the only person who's ever been able to truly see you at this point because my channel is devoted to the sensitives, the empaths, and you are one if you um, ha are, are here watching this and because you're the target, right? And a sensitive or empath, um, intuitive, um, has never really felt like they have been truly understood or like they don't fit in. They've always felt different. Well, the narcissist comes along and mirrors to you how special you are, how awesome and amazing you are. And for an empath um, or intuitive or sensitive, and so this is, you know, like music to your ears and your emotions and you're like, oh my gosh, they finally, someone sees me, they get me and they desire me, me of all people. And I've never felt uh, really desired in that way before. And that's been your, maybe your secret lifelong wish or dream is for someone to come along and desire only you, okay? Well, the narcissist <laughs> tells you exactly what you want to hear. And here's where things start going wrong, okay? They get the toy from the store. They bring the toy home play with it for a little while and very shortly afterward decide that they're now bored with the toy. Okay. So they put the toy on the shelf and it just sits there. Now the toy you is very confused at this point because something has shifted and it feels wrong, but 
you're not sure what's happened. Like you haven't done anything differently, but now you're being treated differently. So what happened to all the love and attention that you were getting? It's almost as if your specialness has suddenly vanished. And it's, I can't say it enough how confusing this is for the empath, okay? It's like, it feels wrong, but you can't pinpoint exactly what's wrong because you're still there with the narcissist. They're in your presence. You can see them, you know, in the room. You're sitting on the shelf. You're observing the narcissist. Maybe they talk to you, you know, but all the love and all the attention is gone. Now, you are not allowed to play with other toys at all. If you play with the other toys, you will be punished. You are not allowed to have toy friends, okay? Only the narcissist can be your friend. You are only allowed to talk to them. You are only allowed to play with them. You are only allowed to talk to them. You are only allowed to play with them. Now, Let's say the narcissist is invited to a birthday party and this other kid's birthday party is supposed to be, you know, the, the attention is supposed to be on them. Well, the narcissist, that's not okay. So what they're going to do is take you off the shelf and take you to the party. Okay. Cause they want to show you off. Look what I have. Look what I have. Look what I have. Look what I have. And they'll show you off to get the attention. But then if they see that other kids at the party can give them attention or they want attention from the other kids at the party, they're going to toss you to the side. You're going to be ignored for the rest of the party. Okay. While they run off and play. And I'll give you a real life example of what this would look like. So long time ago, 27 or so years ago, when I was dating my first husband, we had had an argument and I had gone to spend the night at my father's house. And um, he begged and begged and begged and begged and begged. He called the house, my father's house begged and begged and begged and begged, begged for me to, to let him pick me up. I didn't have my own car at that time. Um, and to come out with him and he was going to make it up to me and he loved me and just, you know, even tears on the phone, how sorry he was. And so I was like young. Okay. I, w I don't even think I was 20 yet. And so I gave in, <laughs> I let him come pick me up and he took me to his fraternity house because there was a get together there. And, um, I have always been an introvert. I've always been more quiet. You know, uh, I like more intimate conversations. And so I didn't, I didn't know a lot of people there. And so what he did was he, st it's unbelievable how I never saw this stuff before. Okay. Um, so what he did was he had me go sit on the sofa while he started playing pool with this other girl and drinking and just getting silly and ignored me the entire time. And the whole time was giving attention to her, laughing with her, telling her jokes, giving her compliments. And that's what they do. This happened multiple times throughout our marriage. Our marriage didn't change a thing. It did not change the behavior at all. So I was being punished, right? So, so, he got the toy back, you know, because some other kid, you know, the toy ran off to play with by itself or whatever, because the narcissist was ignoring it or mistreating it. And then when the narcissist realizes that 
that toy is not available to them when they want it, they go grab the toy away and then they just throw you to the side again. And this happens over and over and over and over. Basically, you exist for them and them only, okay? You are something to be owned and you have no rights, all right? And if you don't play by their rules, you will be punished. That's basically what it looks like. Now, when they shelve you, or ignore you, this is called the devaluation phase, okay? And this can be complicated. This can be direct, you know, where they put you on the shelf because they want you all to themselves and they want you by yourself, okay? Like I said, you're not allowed to play with other toys or you will be punished, okay? So another way this is played out in my life is let's say narc wants to take you out okay let's go out to a club or let's go out to a bar or whatever come on toy get dressed up look pretty let's go to a bar well one of the toys friends shows up at the bar surprise we're running into one of our friends that we knew before we even knew the narc, okay? So the narc is sitting on one side and the, the toy's friend is sitting on the other side. And we're trying to introduce and, and bring everybody together. And during the outing, the narcissist, you know, is nice and, you know, chats and all that stuff. But when you leave, when you leave, that's when the punishment starts. Um, they may drive recklessly. They may start screaming at you nonstop for all the things that you did wrong because you were giving your attention to another toy, something other than them. Your life, you may feel like your life is in danger. Okay, ladies, men, whoever's watching, these are not accidents. This is not due to having too much to drink. I'm telling you because these are the things that I kept telling myself. That was just a one-time incident or they just were having a bad night or, um, you know, they had too much to drink or maybe they had a a drug um, reaction, maybe alcohol, and did they take something else that caused them? No, <laughs> this is narcissistic abuse. Stop making excuses. See it for what it truly is, okay? And get out of it. Quit talking yourself out of, of leaving or breaking up or whatever it is. Stop telling yourself lies, stop making excuses, stop over analyzing what's happened, trying to come up with an answer. It's just going to get worse. Okay. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. This is, uh, it is abuse. This is the devaluation phase and they'll just go right back into the loop of love bombing devaluation, love bombing devaluation, love bombing devaluation, and um, just get yourself off this crazy hamster wheel as soon as you possibly can. That's all I have for now. Until next time, have a great day and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.